Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Grenfell Tower Fire The Grenfell Tower Fire occurred on 14 June 2017, at the 24-story Grenfell Tower, a block of public housing flats in North Kensington, London, England, killing at least 17 people. The fire started shortly before 1.00m local time. Hundreds of firefighters and 45 fire engines were involved in efforts to control the fire. Firefighters were trying to control pockets of fire on the high floors after most of the rest of the building had been gutted. Residents of surrounding buildings were evacuated out of concerns that the tower could collapse. Though the building was later determined to still be structurally sound, there could have been up to 600 people in the 121 and two-bedroom flats of the block. At the time of the fire, at least 17 people were killed, and many residents remain missing. 65 were rescued by firefighters. 74 people were confirmed to be in five hospitals across London, 20 of whom were in a critical condition. Ongoing fires on the upper floors and fears of structural collapse hindered the search and recovery effort. The cause of the fire is not yet known. The mayor of London Sadiq Khan criticized the safety instructions telling people to stay in their flats in particular. Since 2013 the residents organization, Grenfell Action Group, had repeatedly expressed concern about fire safety and had warned in November 2016 that only a catastrophic fire would finally force the blocks management to treat fire precautions and maintenance of fire-related systems to a proper standard. Grenfell Tower The 24-story brutalist Grenfell Tower was designed in 1967 with Kensington and Chelsea Council approving its construction in 1970 as part of Phase 1 of the Lancaster West Redevelopment Project. Contractors A. E. Symes, of Leighton, London commenced construction in 1972 with the building completed in 1974. It was built under the council housing system. It contained 121 and two-bedroom flats and was renovated in 2015-16. The tower is managed by Kensington and Chelsea Tenant Management Organization, the largest tenant management organization in England, on behalf of Kensington and Chelsea Council. The TMO has a board comprising eight residents, four council-appointed members, and three independent members, plans for a regeneration project for the tower were publicized in 2012, overseen by Studio E Architects. The £10 million refurbishment, undertaken by Ryden Limited, was completed in 2016. As part of the project, in 2015-2016, the concrete structure received new windows and new aluminium composite cladding with thermal insulation. The work was carried out by Harley Facades of Crowborough, East Sussex, at a cost of £2.6 million. In the hours following the fire, one of the companies involved in the refurbishment, Ventilation Company Wit UK, removed all references to the refurbishment from its website. They had been involved with the smoke ventilation and extraction system that was fitted to the building during the refit safety concerns. There were significant safety concerns prior to the fire, with criticism leveled against the Kensington and Chelsea London Borough Council for fire safety and building maintenance. In a July 2014 Grenfell Tower regeneration newsletter, the KCTMO instructed residents to stay in the flat in case of a fire stating, our long-standing Stay put policy stays in force until you are told otherwise and also that the front doors for each unit could survive a fire for up to 30 minutes. The May 2016 newsletter had a similar message. 
adding that it was on the advice of the fire brigade. The smoke detection systems have been upgraded and extended. The fire brigade has asked us to reinforce the message that if there is a fire which is not inside your own home, you are generally safest to stay put in your home to begin with. The fire brigade will arrive very quickly if a fire is reported. Grenfell Action Group A residence organization, Grenfell Action Group, published a blog in which it highlighted major safety problems. In 2013, the group published a 2012 fire risk assessment done by a TMO Health and safety officer that revealed significant safety violations. Firefighting equipment at the tower had not been checked for up to four years, on-site fire extinguishers had expired, and some had the word condemned written on them, because they were so old. GAG documented its attempts to contact KCTMO management. They also alerted the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea Cabinet Member for Housing and Property, but said they never received a reply from him or his deputy. In January 2016 Gag warned that people might be trapped in the building if a fire broke out, pointing out that the building had only one entrance and exit, and corridors that were allowed to be filled with rubbish, such as old mattresses. Gag frequently cited other fires in tower blocks when it warned of the hazards at Grenfell. In November 2016 Gag published online an article attacking KCTMO as an evil, unprincipled mini-mafia and accusing the Borough Council of ignoring health and safety laws. Gag suggested that only a catastrophic event will expose the ineptitude and incompetence of KCTMO. The group had also published articles criticizing fire safety and maintenance practices at Grenfell Tower. Fire is visible on the outside of the building. Fire broke out early in the morning of 14 June 2017. The London Fire Brigade were first called to the fire at 054 BST. The fire reportedly began on the second floor, but spread at a terrifying rate upward and to the other side of the building. A team of 250 firefighters from 40 fire engines attempted to control the blaze and rescue people, the first responders arriving six minutes after the alarm. But the fire's extreme temperature hindered rescue attempts. At 4.14, officials from the Metropolitan Police addressed the large crowd of onlookers and urgently instructed them to contact anyone they knew who was trapped in the building, if they are able to reach them via phone or social media, to tell them they must try to self-evacuate and not wait for the fire brigade. Firefighters entered the building to try to rescue people, but reported they were hindered by the extreme heat. According to witnesses, there were people trapped inside, waving from windows for help, some holding children. There were two witness accounts of parents dropping their children down to people below, including a baby who was caught after being thrown from the ninth or tenth floor, and a small boy thrown from the fifth or sixth floor. There were also eyewitness reports that some people were jumping out. At least one person used knotted blankets to make a rope and escape from the burning building. Frequent explosions that were reported to be from gas lines in the building were heard. After three hours, the original crew of firefighters were replaced by a new crew. By sunrise, the firefighters were still battling the fire and trying to spray areas where people were seen trapped. The watching crowd were pushed back from the building because of falling debris. At 5 o'clock, the building was still burning and severely damaged. The fire continued to burn on the tower's upper floors into the afternoon of 14 June. Firefighters were expecting to continue tackling the blaze for at least a further 24 hours. Although fears were expressed that the building could collapse, 
Structural engineers determined that it was not in danger, and that rescue teams could enter it to search for survivors and casualties. Casualties By 5 o'clock BST, police reported that several people were being treated for smoke inhalation. The London Ambulance Service sent 20 ambulance crews to respond to the incident, and 100 police officers were on site. At 6.30, it was reported that 50 people had been taken to five hospitals, Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, King's College Hospital, Royal Free, St. Thomas, and St. Mary's Hospital. Around 9.30, London Fire Commissioner Danny Cotton reported that there were fatalities resulting from the fire, but she could not specify how many had been killed because of the size and complexity of the building. Cotton said, This is an unprecedented incident. In my 29 years of being a firefighter, I have never ever seen anything of this scale. Residents who escaped claim to have heard other People trapped and screaming for help. At noon, the Metropolitan Police announced there were six people confirmed dead, and more than 70 in hospital, with 20 in critical condition. A large number of people were reported missing. At 17.04, the number of dead was increased to 12. And at 11.01 the following day, the number was increased to 17. Cause the cause of the fire has not yet been determined. Several media outlets reported that it may have been caused by a faulty appliance. A fourth-floor resident told the media that it was his neighbor's fridge that caught fire around 1 a.m., and that they immediately began knocking on doors to alert people. He said that within half an hour the building was entirely engulfed in flames. While there was much criticism of the lack of fire sprinkler systems, Jeff Wilkinson, the building regulations columnist for the Architects Journal, wrote in a comment on 14 June, before the cause was known, that if a leaking gas riser or the cladding were at fault, sprinklers would have had little effect. He said he had seen extracts of a fire risk assessment and talk of combustible materials stored in the common walkways, suggesting poor overall management. Criticism Some residents said no fire alarms went off where the fire started. Residents said they were alerted to the fire only by people screaming for help, or knocks on the door and not by a fire alarm. Others reported that they survived by ignoring the council's stay-put policy, its directive instructing residents to remain in their flat in case of fire. The London Wide Radical Housing Network, a citizens' action, group of groups, fighting for housing justice across London, of which the Grenfell Action Group is a member, said that the fire was a horrific preventable tragedy, that was the result of a combination of government cuts, local authority mismanagement, and sheer contempt for council tenants and the homes they live in. Dawn Foster, contributing editor on housing for The Guardian, posited that this was an atrocity that was explicitly political and a symbol of the United Kingdom's deep inequality. Official Policies and Maintenance Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, told BBC Radio 4 that he wanted answers about the fire safety condition at Grenfell Tower, and criticised the official, stay-put, policy. Thankfully residents didn't take that advice, but fled, he said, noting, these are some of the questions that have to be answered. We have lots of people in London living in tower blocks. We can't have people's lives being put at risk because of bad advice or lack of maintenance. Fire Safety Review Shelved Former Housing Minister Gavin Barwell faced criticism after it was revealed 
by Joe Watts in The Independent that he had delayed a fire safety review, and that a report into fire safety in tower blocks had been shelved for four years. Barwell had been due to meet the all-party parliamentary fire safety and rescue group to discuss the review in 2017, but the meeting was postponed after the snap general election was called and he was appointed Downing Street Chief of Staff shortly afterwards. However, in his report Watts also noted that, even before Barwell came to office a review into the fire safety regulations had been outstanding. For years, John Healy called for an immediate fire safety review of tower blocks. What it really needs now is for a very senior cabinet minister to show they're getting a grip on this and reassuring tenants in other tower blocks that they will get to the bottom of the problems. They should commission an independent, immediate review so that the clear lessons must now be taken seriously. Cladding Fire safety experts have speculated that the building's new external cladding was a possible cause of the rapid spread of the fire. Experts said the cladding essentially worked like a chimney in spreading the fire. The cladding could be seen burning and melting, causing additional speculation that it was not made of fire-resistant material. One resident said, The whole one side of the building was on fire. The cladding went up like a matchstick. Records show that a contractor had been paid £2.6 million to install an ACM rain screen over clad during the recent refurbishment. At Grenfell Tower, ACM stands for aluminium composite material, the combustibility of which depends on the choice of insulation core material. Several major fires in high-rise buildings that saw flames spreading up facades at a devastatingly rapid rate have involved flammable cladding, among them the 2007 fire at the Water Club in Atlantic City, USA, the 2009 Lack in Owl House fire in Camberwell, London, the 2009 Beijing Television Cultural Center fire, China, the 2010 Wuxian Golden Suites fire in Marine City, Busan, South Korea, the 2012 Melmose Tower Fire in Roubaix, France, the 2014 La Crosse Tower Fire in Melbourne, Australia, and the 2015 fires in Dubai at the Marina Torch and the Address downtown Dubai. Sam Webb, the architect who investigated the Lacanaul Fire, and who sits on the all-party parliamentary fire safety and rescue group, said, this tragedy was entirely predictable, sadly. Webb also said, I really don't think the building industry understands how fire behaves in buildings and how dangerous it can be. The government's mania for deregulation means our current safety standards just aren't good enough. Some residents had reported concern that the new cladding on the building was fixed onto it with wooden battens. There is widespread concern amongst residents and fire safety experts about the increasing use of timber, even in high-rise buildings. Following a change to building regulations, it was reported that one reason for the new cladding was to improve the view for people living in the surrounding area. Similar cladding containing highly flammable insulation material is believed to have been installed on thousands of other high-rise buildings in countries including Britain, France, the UAE, and Australia. An application for demolition work at Grenfell Tower was deposited with the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea's Building Control Department on the 22nd of May 2014. No decision date had been entered as of the 14th of June 2017. By the 4th of September 2014, a building regulations notice for the recladding work was submitted to the authority and marked with a status of completed, not approved. The use of a building notice building control application is used to remove the need to submit 
detailed plans and proposals to a building control inspector in advance, where the works performed will be approved by the inspector during the course of their construction. Building inspector Jeff Wilkinson remarked that this type of application is wholly inappropriate for large, complex buildings and should only be used on small, simple domestic buildings. Sprinklers Labour MP Harriet Harman told the BBC's The World at One. Councils want to fit sprinklers in their tower blocks, but it comes down to money. The government has been cutting the money to councils. If you cut money to councils, you can't put in sprinklers, whilst Judge Francis Kirkham, who dealt with the inquest into the lack in Owl House fire deaths, maintained the government should encourage providers of housing in high-rise residential buildings to consider the retrofitting of sprinkler systems. Short term the fire's proximity to Latimer Road tube station caused a partial closure of London Underground's Hammersmith and City Line and Circle Line. The A40 Westway was closed in both directions. Bus routes were also being diverted. People from surrounding buildings were evacuated due to concern that the tower might collapse. Following the 8th of June general election, which resulted in no overall majority, a deal was expected to be announced between the Conservative Party and the Democratic Unionist Party. The DUP announced that the fire would delay the finalization and announcement of an agreement between the Conservatives and DUP. According to the BBC, the announcement would not go ahead until the following week and thus could postpone discussions on Brexit that had been scheduled to take place. Community response People in the immediate area and from across London rallied to assist victims of the fire. Donations of food, water, toys, and clothes were made. St. Clement Church on Treadgold Street and St. James Church, Norlands, in the deanery of Kensington, provided shelter for people evacuated from their homes, as did nearby mosques and temples. Nearby Queen's Park Rangers Football Club have offered the Loftus Road venue as a relief centre, and are accepting donations of food, drink and clothing from the local community, and other nearby football clubs Brentford and Fulham have offered their stadiums as relief centres. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver offered free food and shelter to victims of the fire at his nearby restaurant in Westfield, London. Reactions The Queen has said that her thoughts and prayers are with the affected families. Prime Minister Theresa May said she was saddened and called for a cross-government meeting, chaired by Nick Hurd, the new police and fire minister, and a meeting with the Civil Contingencies Secretariat. London Mayor Sadiq Khan issued a statement saying he was devastated. Khan also praised the first responders on the scene. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said that questions needed to be answered about the fire. He praised the emergency services for their actions. Labour MP David Lammy described the fire as corporate manslaughter and called for arrests to be made. Investigations The local borough are pledged to carry out a full investigation into the fire. Prime Minister Theresa May ordered a full public inquiry saying that people deserve answers to why the fire was able to spread as quickly as it did. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.